Hello my dear students, today in this video we will be starting a new chapter that is chapter 7 Permutations and Combinations class 11 Mathematics Such a very very important chapter Okay, this one not only for class 11 but even for the future also as long as you remain I mean loyal to your studies and pursue your career in science, mathematics, no? NBC examinations, UPC examinations, bank examinations, staff selection examinations, literally there will not be even one examination, especially this competitive examinations, where you will not find questions based on the concept of permutations, permutations, permutations and combinations because this chapter generally talks about, teaches us about counting. Now, of course, everybody knows how to count, isn't it? But the question is, how well do you really know how to count? Especially, will be judged uh, when we proceed with this particular chapter. So, let's give more importance to this chapter as we learn because it's going to be useful for us for the future also. Okay, so we will be dealing with many theorems, uh, many ways to count. Um, and uh, basically, the topic talks about know how to count how to arrange you know arrangement selection but we will go into all of that detail i guess in the next video this video will be just a brief introduction on the topic of permutations and combinations but before we really go for that permutation and combination there is something which we really need to learn first and that is the factorial that's the factorial so this concept let's learn it's going to be a very brief video this video uh, concept is also very simple but we need to know how it works then only we can proceed with permutations and uh, combinations so this one helps us in that counting process now arrangement process selection process so we will try to learn the concept very small concept and we will try to learn uh, solve some uh, questions based on the exercise as well as at the end of the video we will be doing some questions that is going to be out of the uh, some very interesting questions, I mean, which will generally teach you the concept of uh, factorial. So you can bring your pen, paper, get ready. So let's begin. What is factorial? Now, uh, when we write a number, expansion, let's say 5, into 4, into 3, into 2, into 1. How much is this going to be? 5, 4, 7, 20, 23, 60, 60. 120 so this is like a continued product of 5 4 3 2 1 and a continued product of 5 along its natural numbers this can also be written in a more compact form okay in a more compact form by this notation generally like an exclamation mark no 5 and that this notation is called as the factorial 5 factorial it is also written as in this form in some books like 5 factorial and this is what is generally fi uh, the factorial notation is all about. Very simple, very simple concept. Once again, let's write down the continued product. Okay, let's write down the continued product of 9 till its last natural number. No, continued product of 9 till its last natural number. So that's going to be... 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Till the last natural number. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That, in a more compact form, can be just written as 9 factorial. Or, generally we don't use this notation that much. This one we generally we use this 9 factorial. Okay, and that is what is basically factorial is all about. So factorial is just an extension of, you know, continued writing down the continued product of natural of a positive integer till its last natural number. Okay, so finally we can just make a, you know, I, I can just give you a definition on factorial that will be, um, okay, if we just assume let n, you can note it down, let n be, let n be a positive integer. Let n be a positive integer. Okay, so now what is, I hope you've got it, isn't it? Factorial, right? Continued product of the first, I mean, the up to the continued product of that particular positive integer till the last natural number, natural number till last one, right? Then the definition can be then the 
continued product then the continued product of first n of first n natural numbers of the first n natural numbers is called is called factorial of n okay denoted by n factorial or in this format n factorial all right now please do remember that uh, this n factorial is a note okay n factorial this factorial notation okay this factorial notation that is n factorial is not defined is not defined if n is negative is not defined if n is a negative value that means this factorial notation is not defined for negative integers okay if n is negative or if, sorry fraction or uh, fraction that means this factorial notation is defined only for positive integers and then we continue with expansion till the last natural number okay you can pause the video and write down if you wish not if you wish actually you should write it down okay very very important this concept because this concept will lead you forward uh, with this particular chapter so for example some examples like uh, 4 factorial so 4 factorial will be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 let's say 11 factorial 11 factorial will be 11 into 10 into 9 into stop if you wish you can stop at 8 factorial you wish to continue Hello. 8 7 6 5 you want to stop okay 5 factorial so factorial simply means an extension so if you remove that factorial you'll, you'll go on extending it until 1 okay so that's what I wanted to show you also. That means if you wish to stop the factorial for simplification, yeah, you can stop. 11 factorial, 11, 10, 9, 8. Okay, you can just stop there. That means 8 factorial. All right. Now, with that concept, what will be n factorial then? With that concept, what will be n factorial? That means I have to extend this, expand this n factorial in the descending order, isn't it? Because we have to reduce, right? 10 factorial means 10, 9, 8, that is 10 minus 1, 9, 9 minus 1, 8, 8 minus 1. No, we have to go on reducing serially till the last natural number. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Similarly, if n is that positive integer in general, how can we write? We will start with n, isn't it? Because 11, we start with 11, next is 11 minus 1. So that's going to be n minus 1 into n minus 2, right? No, n minus 1 minus 1, so we go on decreasing 11 minus 2, 11 minus 3, 11 minus 4, but we just do it serially, that is 11 minus 1, 10, 10 minus 1, 9, 9 minus 1, 8, 8 minus 1, 7, no, we go on decreasing 1, 1 each, in the descending order, so n, if we, stop, if we go for n factorial, n factorial is n, if you wish to expand, n minus 1, n minus 2, you can continue, n minus 3, dot, 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 you can go on and on, till the last natural number that is 3 into 2 into 1 so this is the expansion of n factorial so depending on the question we will be using this n factorial depending on the way uh, and on the questions in which what we have to solve okay some important notes uh, two basic important things that i would like to give you is what is one factorial what will be one factorial one factorial will be of course one we cannot extend more than that isn't it now, interesting concept with this is zero factorial. What is zero factorial? Zero factorial is one. Universal values. I will prove this in another video. Okay, why is zero factorial one? Um, I'll prove this in a very short video in the upcoming video. So, how, why is zero factorial one? But for now, just keep that in mind. That is zero factorial. This is a result. That is zero factorial will be one. Okay. All right, now some more concepts, some more like uh, concepts on this factorial, very important. That's why I keep on telling you. 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. 
What if I just write 6? Multiply 6 before the 5 factorial. Then can I write it as 6 factorial? Is it possible? You know, 5 factorial. Now, on this 5 factorial, if you just pre-multiply by 6, can I write it as 6 factorial? Definitely yes, isn't it? Because it's just a continued product. That means it's just like 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that is also what again? 6 factorial. So that kind of concepts we are going to be needing. Okay, that kind of open concept we will be requiring. That is, if I have n factorial, I pre... So, after this, what is the next value that we have already seen? n minus 1. And then we keep on reducing so we can stop here. What was before that then? If I just pre-multiply by n plus 1, this n factorial, then I think I can write it as n plus 1 factorial, isn't it? Think in the other way around, you know? So far we have been going from top to the bottom. Now this one is like about just going reverse from the bottom to the top, reverse order. So n plus, if we just pre-multiply n factorial by n plus 1, that is same as n plus 1 factorial. I'll give you an example, that is, um, this one actually. Isn't it? Because if I have 7 factorial and then I pre-multiply it by 8, then it is also what? 8 factorial only, just like this concept only. Okay, so those kind of like you know, logical concepts, common sense concepts will be required a lot. Alright, so basically that's what we have with this permutations and combinations. I mean, not permutations and combinations, factorial notation. Okay, but very important, very small concept, but very important. With that being said, let's try to solve some questions very quickly. That is, some questions from exercise 7.2 of the NCERT textbook. That is like very quickly, number one. Let's just do it quickly. Number one, one that is evaluate 8 factorial. Now this one, I guess you can also evaluate because 8 factorial now, it's 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So I guess that all of us for quick calculation, let me just multiply. You can also multiply. So what do we get? You should be getting like 403, 40320. So there was nothing involved there. Next question, let's do it quickly. That is 4 factorial. I want to give you some very interesting questions. So after we finish this exercise. So what will be 4 factorial minus 3 factorial simplification? So like this 4 factorial, I can expand one time. That is 4 into 3 factorial. You can do it another way also. No? Minus 3 factorial. So 3 factorial I can take common, so that's going to be 4 minus 1. Now what is 3 factorial? 3 factorial is 3 into 2 into 1, into what is 4 minus 1? 3. So if you just multiply this, 3 to the 6, 6 3 are how much? 18. So the value is actually 18. Okay? Alright, so very simple, isn't it? Question number 2, now the question is, is 3 factorial plus 4 factorial is equal to 7 factorial. Actually a very good question to clear some doubts. We cannot add like that. Okay, we will not be able to add like that. Just like we have done here, we did not subtract. So we cannot do like that. This is not about like terms, unlike terms and all. No, we just cannot do that. Okay, we just cannot do that. Alright, so we have to solve each of the factorials independently. These are just like trigonometric functions and ratios and all. We have to solve them independently. We just cannot combine them until unless you are using a given theorem or a formula that is given to you by the chapter itself. Okay, so now, okay, let's just prove. Like what is 3 factorial plus 4 factorial? Let me just expand. 3, 2, 1. Plus 4 factorial, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's do it quickly. So 3 to the 6. 4 to the 12, 24. So that's how much? 30. What is 7 factorial? Oh, that's going to be a big number. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So how much is that going to be? 7, 6 are 30. 37 are 210. 4 3 is 12. 12 to 24. So 24 into 210. So that's like 5040. 0, 0. So definitely you can see that they are not same. So yeah, the answer is absolutely not. That is not possible. We just cannot add factorials like that. What is the next question that we have? Okay, compute. So I think that you can do. But anyway, I'll just show you quickly. Um, 
Question number three, compute eight factorial by six factorial into two factorial. So these are just simplifications. So eight into seven, as I said, okay, I'll just stop at six factorial because I can see a six factorial here. Two factorial, I will expand two into one. Now the six factorial, six factorial, same quantity, I'll cancel out. So eight seven are 56 by two. So that is going to be how much? 28. So it's simple arithmetically. Just don't, uh, you know, do anything careless, useless with these factorial notations, respect its properties, that's it. 1 by 6 factorial plus 1 by 7 factorial is equal to x by 8 factorial. Question is, find out the value of x. So, let's do 1 by 6 factorial, I'll just keep it as it is, 1 by 7 into 6 factorial, this 7 I'll expand because I have something in mind that is 8 into 7 into 6 factorial, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a 6 factorial common in all of these terms which I can remove, you know, that will make my job very easy because my job is to find x. So by taking 6 factorial common, what is left here? 1 plus here 1 upon 7, uh, seven right? Is equal to x upon 8. 7 are I can multiply. 56 into 6 factorial. Now 6 factorial, 6 factorial I can cancel out. So LCM 7, 7 plus 1, 8. That's going to be x upon 56. So x will be 8 into... 56 by 7, 7, 8, 7, 56, that means the value of x is how much? 64. Okay. Got it? Okay. Alright, just one last question that is x question number 5. n factorial, n minus r factorial. There is a formula, we will be very soon learning this particular formula. Question is evaluate this value when... Okay, just one question. N is 6, R is 2. Alright, let's just substitute 6 factorial, 6 minus 2 factorial. So that's 6 factorial, 4 factorial. This I can subtract because this is inside the bracket of the whole term factorial. No problem with this. 6 into 5 into 4 factorial upon 4 factorial, 4, 4, 6, 5 are how much? 30. So these are just some basic problems that... Uh, helps us to just learn you know, factorial notations, understand the concept of factorials. Now let's try and solve some general, very important general questions which will really help us remove the problem uh, confusion with, uh, let's say, factorial notation. Some examples, that is what I was telling you. Some examples, that is, n plus 1 factorial is equal to 12 into n minus 1 factorial. Question is, find the value of n. Find the value of n. Alright, let's balance these two sides by expanding some of the factorials. Now you see, listen carefully. For example, 7 factorial, 5 factorial. If we have 2 factorials, think. Okay, focus, relax, think. Which of these 2 factorials should we expand? Or which of these factorials should be expanded to get to that other factorial? What I mean is, should I expand 7 factorial to get 5 factorial? Or should I expand 5 factorial to get 7 factorial? Well, definitely I have to expand this 7 factorial because 5 factorial is along the path of 7 factorial, isn't it? 7 into 6 into 5 factorial. 5 factorial, if I expand, I'm not getting nowhere around 7. That means always, you should also, if you're trying to solve the equations, try to identify which is the bigger factorial. Okay, if there is a match between them, like this n, n, there is a match. So try to find out which is the bigger factorial and you expand that bigger factorial because that bigger factorial, of course, when expanded, that smaller factorial will be along its path. Simple as that. Okay. So that means I will expand n plus 1 factorial. So when I start expanding n plus 1 factorial, again, please don't forget the concept. 
13 factorial if I expand, I start from 13, isn't it? 13 into 12, 1 minus, 1 minus. So, n plus 1 factorial if I expand, it's going to be n plus 1 into, okay, for this I'll just show you, n plus 1 minus 1, right, into n plus 1 minus 2 factorial. I'll just stop there because I know where I'm going, alright? But this is actually not needed, but uh, just for this question, let's just actually see what is happening. So that's n plus 1, n, n, 1 cancel, n into n minus 1 factorial. That's why I stopped here at, n, at this particular third expansion. 12 into n minus 1 factorial. Actually, you can go from here directly to this step. If you just know the concept, isn't it? We just keep on uh, expanding in the descending order. So it's n plus 1, next term 1 less n, next term 1 more less, that is n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, and so on. With that, I can just cancel out these two values, then I'll have just multiplying these two, n squared plus n, I'll bring that 12. After that simple factorization, that is n squared plus 4, and I'll use splitting the middle term. So that will be n, n plus 4, minus 3, n plus 4, equal to 0. So that's n plus 4, n minus 3, equals to 0. So that gives us n is equal to minus 4, or n is equal to 3. That will give us two values. Now which one of this value is not going to be valid? One of these values is not going to be valid. So, n will be 3. Why? Because n cannot be negative. We have already seen, no? we have already studied. I just gave you, that is, uh, factorial is not defined for negative values and fractions. Let's just imagine. So, already decided n is equal to 3. But what was our question? It was n plus 1 factorial is equal to 12 into n minus 1 factorial. Forget about that part. If we just, for example, if we just assume n was minus 4, then what will this be? Minus 4 plus 1 factorial, minus 3 factorial. It is already given that factorial notation is not defined for negative values. So that's why we have to reject this negative value for this question. Okay? So that's one example. Do you want to do one more? Okay, I think maybe one more to Bantahe, isn't it? So, um, let's just do one more question that is, okay, n factorial proof. Okay, this is going to be a very interesting question. Please try to understand that, you know, open up your concept. Start imagine your, as I always mention, to be a science student, if you don't have any imagination, then there is literally no scope for you. Okay, imagination is very important for a science student. Imagination, we have to feel that question. We have to be in that question. We have to imagine that question so that feeling should come. Okay. Uh, as if we are in, I mean, we should be, we should get into that question, then only we will be able to solve. That's why imagination is very important. Now, I'll start with the left hand side to prove that is n factorial upon r factorial. We have to prove that by expanding this, I get this value n in minus 1, n minus 2, dot 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 r plus 1. Look, what is the value of n? Nobody knows how much is n. What is r? Nobody knows what is r. But generally, we will assume that r is smaller than n. That means if n is, let's say, 100, r is maybe 50. Now, i will start expanding. This is a general concept, okay? So, please try to understand. n, I'll expand. n, n minus 1, n minus 2, dot, 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 3, 2, 1. r, I will not expand. I will let it be. There is a reason behind that. Now, see, nobody knows what is the value of r. But assumption is generally r is smaller than n. Because factorial notation is not defined for fractions. Now, suppose if n was 100, r was 50, then in that expansion, 
in that procedure of expansion what should happen is since r is considered to be smaller than n between this along this there will be a certain value where we will come across the value of r like for example if this is 50 factorial this is 100 factorial then it's going to be 100 99 98 97 96 95 we will come across 50 also 50 no? 49 for a simple result, again 3 into 2 into 1. We are just writing down the values which were in between. That means before r, there was r plus 1 also. Dot, 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 dot. Did you get that concept? Once again, if generally we assume r to be always smaller than n, for fractions, so if n was 100 factorial, it will be 100, 99, 98 and so on. Assuming r to be let's say 50 factorial, that is the way it is, okay, so the concept only. r factorial, this is not a theorem, okay, this is a proof, so we have to assume things. If this is 50, then it's going to be like 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 50, 51, 50, 49, 48, it goes on till 3 to 1. And that's what I'm writing here also. No? 51, 50, 49, and so on. Okay? Got that? In that expansion. So now, what I can do is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 dot 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 r plus 1. Right? But this value, this is again what? Expansion of r, isn't it? r, r minus 1, r minus 2, r minus 3, dot, 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 3, 2, 1. That means this, I can just write as r factorial. Isn't it? Divided by r factorial. So then I can just cancel these two values. And once I do that, I have the proof. That is n, n minus 1, n minus 2, dot, 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 r plus 1. So that's why I was telling you the lack of imagination will really hamper your growth. Okay, so imagination is going to be very important for this kind of question. So, so according to that, we have to prove. So here we will have to generally assume that r is maybe less than n. It cannot be greater. If it is greater than generally, the proof will not be uh, this one. That's how the proof is also given. You have to prove according to that one. Okay. Got it? So that's how it is. And that is what this factorial is all about. So of course, don't be worried about with this all these questions. And all. generally, you will understand once we solve more and more problems. Actually, there are more problems again. Uh, but we don't want to be consuming too much of time. All right. So please, I hope you have understood the concept here. And... Factorial by R factorial, assuming R is smaller, looking at the proof, no, from the proof it is understandable that R is smaller, very clear, because N, see it's very clear R is smaller, because you see N factorial by R factorial, as per the expansion on the proof side, you can see that when you expand N, in the expansion of N only you have R, so it's very clear that R is definitely smaller than N, very clear, because otherwise, if r is bigger than n, if r is bigger than n, then when you expand n, you will never get r. Isn't it? Because c, 100. If this is 105, then when you expand 100, you are not going to get 105, isn't it? You will be always, that means r is in between the expansion of n factorial only. That means definitely r is smaller than n. Samja? That's the concept. In the proof also it's given. That means only when you expand 100, you are going to get 70 or 80 or 75. That means 75 is smaller than 100. That's why you're getting 70s, 75s and 80s and all when you expand 100. Okay? So that is what factorial is all about. It's a very simple concept. It's just about expansion, but the vision, you no, know, the imagination should be there. Okay? Before, after. One less, one less. One more, one more on this side. One less, one less on this side. So that concept is quite important. Okay? So I hope that you, I could clarify some of the concepts with uh, regarding to factorial notation. Okay, so uh, next up we will start with permutations and combinations. That's about arrangement and selection.
all right so till then we can practice questions on this we will meet again very soon so take care all of you bye bye